Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups, and today we're live, folks. And I got about 35, 40 minutes for this topic, but I think it is useful and helpful for you out there that are in a breakup. This came up in a topic yesterday, and I understand where people are coming from when they miss their ex, when they want their ex back, and they're going through a tough breakup. I, I get it. I've been there. And we hoping and wishing for an ex to come back. Let's really think about this because uh, this comes up a lot, and I don't think people realize how much their words and their intentions count. And hoping and wishing for an ex to come back can keep you in quicksand as far as your personal growth, um, you doing good at work, you taking care of your children, you maybe meeting a potential better partner for the future. Not here for it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> welcome. Does it work? Hoping and wishing for an ex to come back. Does it work? You know, I wrote in the comments over here, it's not your birthday. There isn't a cake with candles. And do you really believe when you make that wish with the cake that it's going to come true? It's a good question. I, I certainly think that as we get older, if there's a birthday cake and you're making a wish, you get less and less likely to believe like, oh, yeah, um, I'm wishing for $20 million dollars. Still good to wish and hope, but I think and I believe when it's your ex and you're in this situation, it can keep you in a holding pattern. And so I have some things to unpack this a little bit. And the individual that's on the live stream right now, just to let you know, anyone out there, I start off the live streams going into a topic a little bit deeper, and then I'll circle back to anyone that has comments or questions and we can go from there. And any of you out there that is that are hoping or wishing for an ex to come back, please tell me about your experience and put it down in the comments. Or if you were in that place when you were in a breakup and how you came out of it. And if you suggest it to other people, because I'm sure there are moments I've been there. I just don't want you to get stuck in that space where you are uh, hoping for some kind of good luck to happen. So why hoping and wishing your ex comes back doesn't serve you. And again, if you're doing it, I'm not sitting here telling you it's a horrible thing or you're way out of line. I'm saying at some point you have to really think about, is this going to work? Okay. So I have an example for you. And I thought about this this morning. I was on a run, and sometimes before I do the live streams, I'm thinking about topics and things float in my mind and ideas and a way to give you an example of <clears throat> how hoping and wishing isn't going to serve you. Let's say you had a store, okay? Let's say you had a shoe store in a downtown area of San Francisco. I'm from the Bay Area originally, so let's just use San Francisco, a major city. Your store has been there for 10 years, just like maybe your relationship was 10 years or five years. And your store's done pretty well. You've had some ups and downs, just like your relationship. You've you know, had a good year here. You had a couple years that were down because tourism was down and whatnot. Or there might have been some utility issues where the electric was out for a week because of an earthquake. I don't know. Shit happens when you have a business. And so <clears throat> this shoe store is going along and all of a sudden, and, and you specialize in walking and running shoes. You're highly specialized. So you don't sell everything and you excel expensive walking and running shoes. And usually when you have a shoe store, you have, you know, five, six brands. You don't have a hundred brands. Well, the internet's come along and a company has decided to dominate selling all products by shipping them to your home free and suddenly your shoe store is spiraling not from just a good to bad year it's it's going to go out of business right and this is what happens before you break up right there's a spiral down it's like a helicopter going down and you see it coming and you know it's coming but it doesn't feel good and you're bracing yourself for the landing you get down you break up the store goes out of business you follow me? The store goes out of business. Now, when that store goes out of business, you can sit down there and go, oh, I hope and wish that uh, somehow I can get another store. And if I get that other store, I've had success before. 
I had 10 year run. I got clients and customers that would probably follow me. But what you're not taking into account is that your current store or business model does no longer work. And let's relate that to a breakup. Your current set of values in the relationship, your current model of what worked in the relationship schedule wise, time wise, it wasn't working. And so this individual can go home after the shoe store closes. Let's just give it a name, mix shoes or something like that. And he can go or she can go. Oh, I just hope, I hope and wish that someone will call me today and they'll have an available place for rent in downtown San Francisco or a place equal or same value with the opportunity. Now, Saying that, this could be one of those law of attraction things. And someone could call her up out of the blue that's a friend of a friend and say, hey, I got this great location. I know your shoe store went out of business. And I'll put you in downtown Oakland. Or I'll put you in uh, Sausalito, which is a beautiful place. And it's a great opportunity. The rent's, the rent's okay. You can, you can spin it. You can get a small loan. But what didn't change in this hoping and wishing where you got – the store back. And what I'm relating this to is maybe your ex comes back for a cup of tea, for a cup of coffee. Maybe they want to check in with you and see how things are going. And what I'm saying is this individual gets another opportunity to start a store. But what hasn't changed is their model. They still aren't going to be able to compete as a shoe store because the behemoth, this giant that has taken down their business, and they didn't take down their business on purpose, but their current business model is not going to work. They need to improve. They need to pivot. They need to realize, wait a minute, actually, maybe I don't need a storefront. I actually need a really good website and a way to ship shoes to people and somehow be special or different than everyone else out there and offer extremely good value because people nowadays aren't just walking up the street and going, oh, I'll go to Mix Shoe Shop. Because there's so much competition online. And if I'm gonna if I'm gonna sell anything, I probably need to get online and have that present dom presence dominate. And so this doesn't involve hoping and wishing. This involves improving your model. This involves you taking inventory of your business and going, wait a minute. Uh, there's no one to blame here. I could take responsibility that I didn't realize it quicker that, you know, this internet thing's really big. And my business model, long term, is just not going to work. So I have some choices here. I can learn how to sell shoes online and take some lumps, improve myself, and possibly some of these people that were good customers before might follow me. Some of these contacts with vendors of shoes might follow me. And so I can use those things. But me going back, hoping and wishing, and then maybe getting an opportunity from someone saying, oh, I got a, I got a spot for you. I got, I got a location for you. Doesn't change the fact that the business model is not working. Doesn't change the fact that if you go back into business with that same kind of shoe store, that it's probably not going to work. And so where am I going with this? It's the same thing for your breakup. Something was wrong with your model and the relationship, whether that was your ex or you, and you don't necessarily want to change for your ex, but you want to change moving forward because you're like, wait, I got some flaws here that I can work on and I'm going to be able to work on them when I take a step back. And it's the same thing with this shoe store, mix shoe store, downtown San Francisco, right? This shoe store was legendary for five or 10 years. It did a hell of a business. Your relationship was legendary for five or 10 years. It was a hell of a relationship, but it fell apart and it had some reasons for falling apart and hoping and wishing that you'll just get back to, together and it'll be rose petals and wine glasses. Well, that's probably not realistic. It certainly wouldn't be realistic for a business. And <clears throat> what you got to get on deck is like, if this person contacts me, let's talk about the shoe store. If someone contacts me and go, hey, I got this location. And, and you go, wait a minute, this is going to be the same style of the way I sold before. I'm probably going to hit the same problems. 
actually, I really need to find someone that can design a website and maybe get a warehouse somewhere that's really cheap to store the stuff. Or I need to team up with that company that actually has beat the hell out of my business. Those are the options you're looking at. And you can't see those options until your business goes out of business because you are so in love with the fact that you have this great business. It's your baby. You've built it from the bottom up and you believe I'm going to make it work until it goes down. Now, when it goes down, now you're at ground zero. And now you got to go, wait a minute, man. I got to reassess everything. And that's the same thing when you break up. You have to reassess everything from your standpoint as an individual. Okay. And in doing so, you don't go wishing and hoping your ex comes back. Because if even if wishing and hoping works, someone mentioned yesterday that um, they're religious and they like to pray. Good for you. Outstanding. I have no problem with that. I think there's a place for that. Uh, I think when hard times are 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 there, everyone has a prayer to say. Um, everyone has some wishing and hoping going. I'm, I'm with you. But even if you're wishing and hoping, but you're not making any improvements, that person could come back around. That opportunity for a new business spot could come back around. But you're going to get the same result, right? Just because they come back to you doesn't mean the relationship is going to work again. Now, if they come back to you and you're like, yeah, I lost 20 pounds. Uh, I got a promotion at work. I wrote that book I've always wanted to write. Um, I moved into a new flat that's closer to downtown. And it's, you know, it's got a view of the bridge, whatever. Okay. But you got, you got some gusto. You got some juice. They don't come back to you and you're the, the same person, right? I'm not telling you to become Superman, but I would say in the time that they're gone for you to get up off the mat and get on offense, right? And let's, let's pivot out of this into a different example. Let's say that you have a good friend or family member, or let's just say an ex and they're a drug addict and you're hoping and wishing they get better. That's nice. It's admirable. It's noble. It's doable. In the end, they're going to have to take care of themselves and do the work, regardless if you hope or wish. You're hoping and wishing is just good intentions. It's happy for them, and it comes from a good place. And you're not really attached to getting something out of that other than being really happy for them. And so that in that case, it's a little bit different. But when you're hoping and wishing for your ex, you're attached to the outcome. You somehow believe that once you get them to come back, that everything's going to be better. I'm not sure that's real. I'm not sure that's real because it's actually an extremely good opportunity for you to take some inventory of your life, see where you want to improve. Let's give you another example. Let's say you hope a family member buys you a new car, right? Let's say you are just finishing college and your father or mother or your grandmother or grandfather has a little extra money. I've seen this before. And you're going, wow, I just, I just need a decent car. And grandma always told me she'd get me a car, but I don't want to ask because she hasn't brought it up in a while. And you're hoping and wishing to get that car. Now, grandma hasn't said anything about it. It hasn't come up for years. But you remember when you were 18, now you're 24, that... She told me that she was going to give me that car, get me a car. I don't want to ask though, but I'm going to hope and wish. I hope she remembers. I, w I, w I hope she remembers. Now you can you can play with that for a little bit, but if you are really attached to that, you're going to somehow lose track of the idea that if Grandma doesn't buy me the car, I just graduated college. I need to get a job. In that job, it's possible for me to get my own car. And actually, if I get my own car, I probably will feel better about it. But if you're attached. To hoping and wishing that grandma remembers and grandma doesn't remember, you go down to ground zero. Instead, broaden your outlook and go, I need to get a new car. How am I going to go about this? Grandma did mention that she'd get me a new car, but I'm not going to depend on that. If she does it, it's a bonus. I would accept it with gratitude. But right now, I can't expect her to get that for me. She's already done a lot for me. She's getting older and maybe she needs her extra money. Maybe she forgot, but I don't need the charity. What I need to do is get myself a damn good job that I'm excited about and possibly 
once I get a job, instead of hoping and wishing, I can approach grandma and say, instead of buying me a car outright, hey, grandma, can you help me out with a small down payment on a car? Then you're going on offense. You're being direct. And you're like, can you give me a down payment? I just got this new job. I think I can make the payment. I know I can make the payment. Um, and you don't even need to mention, well, you told me you'd buy me a car. See how that comes from a different place? All right. Alternatives to hoping and wishing your ex comes back. So I do a top 10 here. Number one, take responsibility. Take responsibility for who you are, where you're at in life, and that you have some power in the situation that sitting around hoping and wishing um, isn't going to be as productive as making some plans for the future that produce some results outside of getting your ex back, but more or less improving yourself and your outlook and where you're at. Number two, simple. Tell yourself you're capable of meeting someone else. Tell yourself that every day. Tell yourself, I'm capable of meeting someone of equal or higher value in my book. Someone that matches up better with me. Not necessarily someone that's better than my ex, but someone that's better, a better match for me. I'm capable of that. I've done it before. I met them. Why couldn't I meet another human being of equal or higher value? Tell yourself that regularly until you start believing it. Number three, if this person ever did come back, would it serve me to improve some things about myself? I think you can answer that pretty easy. Number four, do I want pity? Do I want pity? I don't want pity. Um, should I go on offense? Should I play to win? What do I mean by that? You just got knocked down in a boxing match. You're on the ground. You're hoping and wishing to get back up? No. At some point, you're going to go, I got to get the fuck back up. I got to get up. I got to get back in the ring. Or I got to just get up so I can get back to the locker room, regroup, see a doctor, have them check check me out, and then I got to get back to training and play to win. And what do I mean by playing to win? It means when you're hoping and wishing, you're just hoping not to lose. Playing to win means... No, I'm regrouping. I'm not. I'm not playing this game not to lose. I'm not. I'm not running the clock out. I'm going down. And I'm. I'm going for a score for me. Number five. Identify specific areas you lack confidence in and go to work on them. Sounds simple. Do it. <clears throat> What's the most important thing you could do for humanity? Deep question. I'll ask that one more time. And put this in the comments because this is a great question to ask yourself if you're hoping and wishing for your ex back because you're too focused on yourself. And that's where depression and anxiety comes in that everything's about you and what you don't have and what you should have and what you wish you have. And in reality, when you go out and serve other people and you do some nice things, charitable work, helping the old lady across the street, it just feels good, right? What is the most important thing you could do for humanity? Deep question. Now, if you're laughing at that, or you're saying like, yeah, right. Think about that. Where are you at? Right? Do Number seven, do you have significance outside of your ex? Are you raising a child? Do you have a job where you're important there? Where they depend on you? I know I have had a lot of clients that I've coached that have been nurses. And they always say, well, I love my job. I help people. I'm good at it. That's significant. That means you're important. That means you're a contribution to society. It's much deeper than just making money. Now you need to go back to that job and go, how can I improve as a nurse? Because I'm significant here. How can I be a little bit more significant? How can I be a little bit more helpful? And on top of it, it's a bonus that you're actually important thing. You're doing an important thing for humanity. Number eight, is it possible you are hoping for a relationship that isn't really that good? Just, just ponder that for a minute. You broke up for a reason, or they broke up with you for a reason. Possibly they didn't appreciate you. I hear this a lot, or they didn't communicate well, or they didn't do this, or they didn't do that, or they didn't do this, or you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Is it possible that you weren't just a good match, that you weren't on the same page, that you guys lack the same values, and that it was never going to be better than it was at that moment, and possibly it was a blessing in disguise that you had a breakup? Ask yourself that as you're hoping and wishing to have them back. Ask yourself, is it possible you're hoping for a relationship that isn't really that good? that actually was toxic most of the time, that actually had you accepting things that you never thought you'd accept before? Number nine, write your story out. Get clear again, what I'm hoping for, 
then write the story of you hoping and wishing and your ex comes back. Does that seem real? So write out your breakup story. Send it into writemac.com if you like. Hold it for yourself. Do whatever you want with it. But then write the story of you sitting around hoping and wishing and somehow a Disney story appears and you get your ex back. It's Cinderella at the ball. Write that story out of you sitting back at the at home, hoping and wishing, hoping and wishing, doing all this hoping and wishing, and they somehow appear magically the next day and everything is rose petals and wine glasses. Do you believe that's possible? Do you really believe it? Number 10 and the final one, are you ready? Dun, 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 dun. What would you tell your close friend or sibling if they told you, yeah, I'm really hoping and wishing that Dan comes back, or I'm really hoping and wishing that Jane comes back to me because uh, we just had this incredible relationship and they, they need to see the light. What would you tell them? Would you go, yeah, keep hoping and wishing? What would you tell them? Or would you say, you know what? I think that's great. If you want to sit down and tell me your story and what happened, I'll give you some feedback. Or would you tell them, hey, you know what? You're a good person. You got a lot of value. And regardless if they come back or they don't come back, you're going to be just fine. See that reframe? So I'm going to get back on deck on the live stream here. I've had some people here for a little while. <clears throat> I've gotten an X back and it was not worth it. Not here for it. I don't know if that's specially for my show. Well, welcome. Not here for it. I haven't seen you on the live stream before. Yes, you're so right. Self-reflection is the best. I journal a lot about dating just to get out. It's a very eye-opening thing. Well, that's outstanding. Thanks for sharing that. Not here for it. Um, Self-reflection is huge. Taking some inventory of what's going on. Um, I think that's outstanding. That's a big deal. Uh, Rob on deck, as always. You're always welcome, my friend. Uh, Black Widow, 81. 81 is a great year, right? How you doing? Not here for it. Take care of oneself. Great line. Yeah, if anyone in the comments, if you're watching this video later on, please please share if you think hoping and wishing for an ex to come back or you've done it before or there was something that I mentioned that resonated with you. Tell me the point that stands out the most. Can't take care of anyone. You don't take care of your oneself first. Absolutely true. As I've mentioned before recently, you are, if you're two wounded birds and you have two wings, you can't fly. Things that make you go, hmm. Oh, wow. Isn't that an Arsenio Hall thing? Sure was. I'm pretty good. Arsenio Hall. Wow. Isn't that what he used to say? Things that make you go, hmm. That was a long time ago, man. It's like Arsenio Hall was huge and he just disappeared. He just went off the map. So right now, I do have a live coaching that I got to get prepared for in about 10, 15 minutes. So anyone open up with questions. We don't have a bunch of people on deck. Thanks for the likes, folks. But any questions pertaining to your breakup or what I just mentioned, um, the way the live streams are run now, maybe the first 15, 20 minutes, I'll go into a topic such as the one I went into today. And this is based on something I talked to someone about yesterday. <clears throat> and certainly hoping and wishing is something we all kind of do out of a breakup. And I'm not saying to ignore that. I'm not saying to fight it with force. But we, we certainly don't want to sit on hoping and wishing as, as if it, it's, you know, like I said before, it's a Disney movie or something like that. You can do it for a little bit and then you got to release it. And then you got to move on and start making some actions, start doing some things, start taking some inventory. Because like I said, with that example, you got to improve the store, right? The people I've met, especially a lot of small businesses are going out, out of business and they're, they're making all these complaints and excuses. Uh, oh, well, there's not as many people coming. There's this or that. It's like, no, if you have a storefront or a business that is stationary, the internet is real and you're not going to compete with it being in a storefront. So you actually hoping and wishing that, you know, more customers come to your door, hoping and wishing that you'll get a better space on and on. You're not really addressing the real problem. You're not being honest with yourself. And that's what happens in breakups. You can hope and wish, but are you being, that's why it's so absolutely important to write out your story and get someone to, like myself or someone else to actually give you some, some feedback because you need to get crystal clear on that. 
Because a lot of times, what are you hoping and wishing for? You're just hoping and wishing that you didn't feel so damn lonely. I know. I know the feeling. I've been there a couple times. As for me, I feel like the less love I show and express now, the better I feel. Like I was taken for granted because I have too much. Now I'm pretty much like cold. Not a bitch, but cold, colder. Wow. I think we can show that. I mean, how is that serving, though, though, to identify with the attitude that you're colder than that? What's up, G-Money? Always a pleasure. Where's your power in the idea that you were taking for granted? So, because I hear this sometimes. Well, I was taken for granted, or they said I was. I took them for granted. How about you just say that you weren't a good match, and this individual, uh, and you had different outlooks on the way a relationship was run, instead of you feeling like they didn't appreciate you enough? Why don't you find someone that appreciates you more? Because the idea that someone did that to you you're better off that you guys broke up, right? Um, they just run a relationship different than your expectations. I feel like the less love I show and express now, the better I feel. And what do you mean by that? I feel like the less love I show and express now, the better I feel to your ex or to everyone. I chased and put my feelings out there and got hurt, so now I'm just chill. Being chill and colder than a mm. well, you were vulnerable, you put yourself out there. The results didn't come back the way you wanted them to come back, but you did get some clarity in that you realized, hey, this person isn't meeting me halfway, they're not on my level as far as care and love go. Love goes. And so, so now you need to move forward with your head high and open to the fact that you might meet someone else in the future and not carry that bag of shit with you so that when you meet someone in the next relationship or dating situation, you won't be like, oh, this person's the same way. Like, I'm a loving person, but now he feels I've changed. He notices that I'm not the same. Well, I, I think what you're doing is you're saying uh, it wasn't reciprocal uh, and therefore the spigot's off. And where you want to, what you want to do with that is come from a place that's eventually more neutral rather than I'm trying to hurt you because you hurt me. And that's what a lot of people do, right? Why do we kill mosquitoes, right? We don't go out of our way to kill flies so much. We don't go out of our way to ever kill butterflies. Why do we kill mosquitoes? Because they hurt us, right? They bite us. And so if an ex hurt you, what you're doing right now which is natural, is you're kind of going out of your way with with a little bit of vengeance. And that's okay, but at some point you got to release it because it won't allow you to meet someone else. <clears throat> and so you're that the the stage of being upset or ang angry out of a breakup is a stage. You don't want to get stuck in that stage. You don't want to carry it later on. It's part of you, it's part of you getting over the hump and going, actually I'm done with this. But don't I'd much rather you say I'm a loving person that was disappointed rather than I'm a loving person. I'm not going to put myself out there again and show such love again. Cause I'm going to get burned again. This was one individual that showed his cards and you weren't happy with him. Whoever cares less controls the relationship. That's a gospel G money. I'm not really trying to hurt him. Just show him that I'm going to be as vulnerable as I was to allow him to take advantage again. And you're right. Well, thank you for saying I'm right. <clears throat> I'm just reframing things in a different way uh, that has less force and angst, I, I would say. But I know where you're coming from. I know the feeling. You know, I wasn't always able to do this. This took some time on my own journey in my own life. <clears throat> Not here for it. I haven't seen you on one of the live streams before. I just want to say welcome. And uh, if you have any specific questions, you're welcome to ask. Like I said, I got about mm, five to eight minutes. Yeah.
not really trying to hurt him. <clears throat> it's just a side effect. <laughs> I got to get a haircut, man. Got, I got the clown hair coming out. I'm thinking about just shaving down the middle, right? I'm just going bald in the middle and then doing a thumbnail with that and see how many views you get for that. <clears throat> Mac, I missed the intro. What was the birthday cake point? Uh, no problem, G-Money. You get VIP status. Um, <clears throat> what do you do on your birthday cake? You wish. You make a wish, right? You blow out the candles. And I'm saying, at what age do you start? When, when you make the wish, which I don't have a problem with. I think that's probably good for your life to make wishes. Um, I, when you blow out the candles. Uh, but do you really... Do you really cling to that wish? Um, it was funny. Someone in a, a live coaching session recently. So I'm saying you don't cling to that wish as much as an adult because you know deep down you probably would be disappointed and wasting a lot of time if you were you know, sitting there wishing and hoping every night for whatever you wished for on that birthday cake. But if you make a wish and just let it go, that's just a bonus if it comes back, right? And it's not in wishing and hoping for your ex to come back certainly isn't as playful and um, gripping as oh, I really hope my ex comes back. Right. <clears throat> Does that make sense? G money. Um, it's like he sees I don't call him as much, talk to him as much, show him as much interest or say I love you or miss him, miss you back. Why don't you just go full no contact? What is what? Thanks for the welcome. Great channel. Why well, I appreciate it. Not here for it. Uh, I've made an effort over the last, I'd say last month and a half to do a live stream every day. They're just not the same time. <clears throat> They're rounding out here though. I think it's been good. No worries, G money. Well, I think it's a really interesting topic, this, this topic. And um, I just see it over and over again. Um, and I don't, I don't remember feeling like, I wish and hope we get back together. I thought of, <laughs> I was thinking of tactics or strategies. I was thinking of why they did it. Um, you know, sometimes anger, but thinking like, I hope they come back. I remember when, uh, cause I grew up Catholic and I'm not, I'm not devout, but I uh, grew up, you know, how to go to catechism and, went to Ash Wednesday and those things. And I remember, you know, when stuff went down, you know, someone was hurt or something like that. I used to go light a candle at church. I didn't go to church every Sunday, but I'd light a candle and say something for that person. And I would release it. I wouldn't hold it. Um, <clears throat> I, mean, I guess you could certainly do that for a breakup, but I just don't want you to cling to it because then you're never going to really, you, you. and with the breakup, you're what you're not doing a lot of times is just taking inventory of what happened. I did actually, and he contacted me after two weeks and thought I moved on. I got his attention, though. <clears throat> Are you chasing a good relationship? For some reason, realizing that breaking up was the right call is painful, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, what people don't realize, because majority of the people that come to my channel are majority, sh shoot, 80 to 90 percent, I'd say, someone broke up with them. Okay. And so they were the dumpy, but I've been on the other end. It doesn't feel good to have to break up with someone and they're crying in front of you. Um, it, it's damn hard. It goes both ways. Oh, they don't care about me. They don't know. That's not true. They're just being honest that they don't look at it as being something that can be long-term or they might've met someone else or um, some of the activities and habits that you have long-term, they just can't deal with them any longer. And so for some reason you're thinking like, wow, but the reality is, would you rather stay with, would, would you rather them stay with you out of pity? Right. So this is a good little 30 minute shot here. Any closing questions, folks? Thank you for the likes. I appreciate it. Anything that you'd like me to... No, it's not lemonade, hun. It's water, mostly water with a 
splash of uh, apple juice. The apple juice is like 100% apple juice. Tasmanian apple juice, actually. So Dylan's not here today. What we, what we want to get from people who can't give it to us, we want what we can't get from people who can't give it to us. Yeah, no, it's not lemonade. I haven't had lemonade in a long time, actually. I used to love lemonade. Remember lemonade in the malls was where they sell those uh, corn dogs? That stuff's sweet, full of sugar. Um, no, it's just a splash of apple juice in there. What we we want, what we can't get from people who can't give it to us. It's possible, but I would say over time you want to release that. Yeah, liquid diabetes. Ooh, that's a bad one. Yeah. When I think, you know, when I was um, 16 all the way up to, let's say, like 21, I always worked in a mall. No, I didn't always work in a mall. I worked, I worked in different retail jobs, 16 to 18. I don't know. But they have those food courts and shopping malls in the States. I'm sure they'd have them in Canada. The food that they – oh, man. Looking back, you wonder why people get headaches and stuff. A lot of it's diet, man. Why do we dinner? <laughs> I'm seasoned, G Money. I'm seasoned, right? I've got a friend. Um, I got a couple of friends that are pretty well off, and one of them's always like, "Oh, you know, it wasn't always that easy for my family." You know, I, you know, like I, we had to do this, and I'm like, "Yeah, okay, okay, right." I'm pretty, pretty wealthy, and I'm like, "Did you ever have to apply for a job?" And it was like, no. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, even though you might have uh, swept the floors at your family's company, it's still not the same as uh, going in a job you really don't like that much and serving people uh, because you get seasoned, like I said. Builds character like fuck, G-Money. I wouldn't be the person I am now. I'm never, you, you know, when I go to a cafe, uh, I don't eat fast food really, but if I go somewhere, I treat staff with damn respect. And if someone's around me and they're being rude to someone, I remember years back, I was at a Friday's. I guess you guys probably know what a Friday's. This was years ago. And the guy was like, the place was packed. It was busy. He came over. It was my, it was my mom, my sister, my niece, my nephew, my ex-girlfriend at the time. And he's like, he's like, hey, I'm sorry, guys, but he goes, I got a splitting headache today. So if I'm off or if I seem rude to you, and I was like, hey, man, thanks for telling us. No problem. Do what you got to do. Just do the best you can. And I, and I had compassion for him, you know. People don't realize, like, jobs like that, oh, this person didn't do this or that for me. It's like, <laughs> these people are ma – I was making – when I was 16, I think I made, like, six twenty five an hour <laughs> for a year at a department store. I don't even think you're allowed to get paid that much anymore. Yeah, white or wheat dinner roll, you like that one. It does build character, though, and it does build compassion. <clears throat> and then all the varieties of people that I worked with psh, completely serves me now when I talk to people in live coaching sessions. I can talk to anyone. <clears throat> all right, folks, I'm going to – is that funny to you, Black Widow? <laughs> Which part is funny? That's one thing in the live coaching session. You always got to laugh a little bit. Breakup's got to be so damn serious. If we can laugh about a few things. I remember um, one of those reality TV shows. I forgot which one it was. G-Money will know because you got good knowledge on this kind of stuff. It was an, uh, it was like X, the 625 part. Yeah, that's crazy, huh? That's real, too. I'm not joking. Um <clears throat> Or we, you said. Um, yeah, they had this reality show, and uh, I think Vanilla Ice was on it. The guy from Chips, I think Ron Jeremy was on it. Um, all these like ex superstars, Rick James. 
this was on VH1 or one of those. This got to be like 12 or 13 years ago. I don't know what it was. I wasn't deep into it, but Vanilla Ice was really would really get pissed off if someone made a joke about him. And the guy from Chips, right, the uh, Paunch, he he was like, "Look, man, sometimes you got to laugh at yourself. Sometimes you got to look back at your life and not take things so damn serious." And he got through to him because everyone was <laughs> everyone was making fun of Vanilla Ice for different things or making a joke here, and he was just on edge all the time. Sometimes out of your breakup, that's how you are too. And it's at some point you got to. You got to be like, like sometimes a turning point is when people go, God damn, I can't believe how, how pathetic or bad I was when I did that or this. And looking back at it, you, that's when you come out of it. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, and you don't really like yourself, right? Because we're human people actually, it's funny. People like, especially like in public speaking, people like people that make mistakes, right? That's why we like the tabloids. People like when people make mistakes. It's human. All right, I'm going to – um, yeah, it's classic. Huh? I'm going to have to close out on that. I got a live coaching coming up. I just wanted to get this one in really quick. Good to have you, Black Widow, 81, G-Money. Why are we dinner roll? Good knowledge. Not here for it. Thank you. Thanks for the like. I appreciate it. I thank you for supporting the channel. Rob, as always, it's a pleasure. Shangri La's finest. Take it easy, folks. Curtains.